So I'll give you a short summary of some of the things the Holy Spirit does and how then we can pray to him, asking him to help us because quite frankly, we need his help. Here's asking for the Holy Spirit. I'll give you a few examples. John 16, 13, Jesus says, the spirit of truth will guide you into the truth. How many of you want to know the truth? The Holy Spirit's the one that'll lead and guide you in the truth. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said. نبصر إخوانا غرقا فنمر كما لا يبصر فلنأمر بالمعروف ولننهى عن فعل الشر ولنتركها عذارا دجلا خلقت كي نعذار لا أملك فكر الكلمات تضيع بالدين مورر أو شخصية تأثير ما عندي فلتتقهقر ما تذكر ليس بعذر يقبل في يوم المحشر لما لا تتثقف لما لا تترك ما منه تصغر تترك ما منه تصغر إبي أنصار الهدى He says I have yet many things to say unto you but he cannot bear them now. How be? When he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak from himself. For what things shall he hear, that shall he speak. In the year 610, something happened that would transform not just his life, but the entire history of the world. According to Muslim tradition, Muhammad was meditating as usual and he fell asleep. But then suddenly he awoke in abject terror. His body was shaking uncontrollably. He later described the experience as if an angel had him in such a tight, suffocating embrace that he felt that his life was being squeezed out of him. As he lay there, completely shattered, Muhammad heard one voice and it commanded him with one word, Iqra, read. But Muhammad replied, I can't, I'm not one of those who read. For he shall not speak from himself, but what things shall he hear, that shall he speak. The voice returned for a second time, read. Muhammad replied, I'm not one of those who read. Then the voice returned for a third time. Read. And on this third command, Muhammad replied, What shall I read? الذي علم بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم The Arabic language by its nature has been preserved intact unchangeable with the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Arab grammarians and the Arab uh, lexicographers were the first people the first dictionary in the English language is 16th century they don't even know really what Chaucer's uh, language meant. They can only guess at a lot of words, the meanings of words. The Hebrew language, the Hebrews caught on to dictionaries from the Muslims. And this is why in modern biblical studies in Tel Aviv and the universities where they study, they go to Arabic roots to understand the Bible. This is a fact that I'm not making this up. They go to Arabic roots to understand the Bible because they recognize that as a Semitic language, it is the only language that has maintained a lexical purity that other languages have not uh, maintained because of the preservation of our scholars. And, and by the tawfiq of Allah, because when Allah said, inna nahnu nazalna dhikr wa inna lahu dhafidun, that includes the preservation of the Arabic language because it's an essential aspect. The Arabic language has been preserved. 
and it's there for whoever wants it. If you want dunya, then learn English. But if you want akhirah, learn Arabic. Because it is the language that literally opens up a whole world of meaning that is inaccessible in the English language. And I'm saying that as somebody who is bilingual, who, who reads the Quran in Arabic and reads English. The, the Arabic, the, the Quran is not the Quran in English. It cannot be called the Quran in English. The particular interest here is that for the first time in Armenian, someone talks about uh, Muhammad and mentions him by name and says a little bit about what he did. Semios himself was talking about the events around the year 630, which was before Muhammad had actually died. Sibius gives a surprisingly accurate account of Muhammad's background and teachings. Translating from the Armenian. At that time, a certain man whose name was Mahmet, which is the usual name for Muhammad in Armenian, a merchant, as if by the command of God, appeared to them as a preacher. Now, Muhammad gave them laws namely not to eat carrion not to drink wine not to speak falsehood and not to engage in fornication whose name was Mahmet whose name was Mahmet Okay, Dr. Campbell, if you cannot answer the contradictions in Genesis regarding the creation, don't you think that the, that proves that the Bible is unscientific and therefore not from God. I admit that I have some problems with this, but I also have all the fulfilled prophecies, and that's very important to me. And, Jesus, and it says that Jesus is the first cornerstone, and built on it, he's built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. And so the, the prophets prophesied, and the apostles wrote down when God fulfilled the prophecy. I know that doesn't answer your question, but it, my faith is in Christ for as my Savior. But what things so shall he hear that shall he speak and he shall declare unto you the things that are to come he shall glorify me eight masculine pronouns in one verse I say it ill befits a ghost you agree that is a man, a man, a man, a man. Eight times. There is not another verse in the whole Bible with eight masculine pronouns or eight feminine gender or eight neuter genders. There isn't. This is a unique verse for a unique personality, Muhammad. Man, man, man. Not a ghost, not a spook. But we are told he's a spirit. Is Muhammad a spirit? I say yes. That's what your Bible says. You see, every time the word spirit is used in your Bible, I'm telling the Christian, it doesn't stand for the Holy Ghost. Because in the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible, it, we are told that seven spirits of God went out into the world. I say, you believe in seven Holy Ghosts? He says, no, there's only one Holy Ghost. I said, look, it's a seven spirits. It means should be seven Holy Ghosts. No, spirit doesn't stand for Holy Ghost every time. Then in the same John, the same John, in the first epistle of John, chapter 5, verse 4, he says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, 
but try the spirits whether they are of God for many false prophets have gone out into the world so false spirit is a false false prophet is a false spirit true prophet is a true spirit Saint John is using spirit for a prophet don't believe every spirit don't believe in every prophet the spirit it says that confesseth that Jesus is the Christ is of God means the prophet that says that Jesus is the Christ is the Messiah the Messiah is from Allah that's what John says I said well find out whether this spirit this prophet Muhammad does say that Jesus is the Christ open surah Ali Imran chapter 3 verse 45 it says وَإِذْ قَالَتِ الْمَلَائِكَةُ يَا مَرْيَمُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ اصْطَفَاكِ وَطَهَّرَكِ وَاصْطَفَاكِ عَلَى نِسَاءِ الْعَالَمِينَ يَا مَرْيَمُ قُنُتِي لِرَبِّكِ وَاسْجُدِي وَارْكَعِي مَعَ الرَّاكِعِينَ ذَلِكَ مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ ما <laughs> اسمه المسيح عيسى بن مريم وجيها وجيها في الدنيا والآخرة ومن المقربين. Muhammad said, "Is he the Christ? Yes, that's what every Muslim believes. On the testification of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, one thousand million Muslims of the world they believe that Jesus is the Christ. He says the spirit that confesses, the prophet that says that Jesus is the Christ is of God." Why don't you apply this to me?